Today we're at Aero Affinity in DeLand, Florida, where we're taking a closer look at an airplane that has only recently hit the US market. Let me introduce you to the Brazilian turbocharged Monterre MC-01. With Brazil becoming a major player in the aviation industry, it's no surprise that the Monterre MC-01 is a great example of their expertise. Drawing inspiration from the popular Paradise LSA, the Monterre boasts a unique design that offers enhanced comfort, safety, and performance. Its 141 horsepower turbocharged Rotax 915 engine and Duke 4-bladed propeller deliver impressive power and a smooth ride. And with a steel tubing frame and lightweight aluminum skin, you can feel the quality and craftsmanship that has gone into the MC-01. The Monterre's interior is simple yet luxurious, which provides a comfortable and enjoyable experience for pilots. The dual Garmin G3X glass cockpit is the centerpiece of the airplane's impressive technology, making it a serious contender for both light sport pilots and hard IFR cross-country aviators alike. But that's enough talk, so let's go over to Alex from Aero Affinity as he shares his insights on the Monterre MC-01, and then we'll take it up for a flight to see what the airplane is really like. All right, so this is the uh, newest, latest and greatest Monterre MC-01 out of Brazil. Uh, this is actually represented by Aero Affinity, which is a group I'm a part of. Um, we import them and sell them here. This is a fully high-wing metalized aircraft. Uh, which lends itself to being very strong, has a steel sub cage. It has the Rotax 915 IS, which is a turbocharged, fuel injected, 141 horsepower power plant. Uh, makes it for a very well cross country as well as cruise application. It holds 37 gallons of fuel, so you can go a long distance. And has a third door on the other side, which you can't see from here, but that gives it a large cargo ca carrying capacity and you can fit quite a bit in there. So you and the wife can pack up for the weekend, head somewhere, and it's all within distance and with manageable distance on this. All right, so we'll start at the front here. Um, this is actually a composite front end cowling fairing uh, that covers the engine, uh, easily accessible via this, this little rod. You have a screw here, pulls this out, opens this entire top hatch. This scoop is for the intercooler, for the turbo on this application. Being this engine is turbo, it does come with the 912 ULS and 912 IS as well. Uh, so in that case, you would not have the scoop. We have our NAC uh, inlets ports for the um, fresh air to go into the cockpit. You have the ability to close them or open them for comfort. As an aircraft option, you can get a heater so you can stay warm as well. As we go move to the pilot side door, I'll open this. You can see a very large entryway. The seats, they move all the way back and forward, fully adjustable, and they are fully reclinable. So here, I'll demonstrate that real quick. So you can actually lay this sucker down all the way and if you want to take a look in there, you can see how much room you have. So for a large adult, this is extremely comfortable. On the front portion here, you obviously have your panel. This has dual 10-inch G3Xs, a G5 as a backup. It does have the space for the navigator to, op to option this out for IFR use and training. It does have autopilot. And then all of your switches are right there. Moving down, you're going to have your fuel selector, your flap switch, which are electric flaps, electric trim, um, and then your throttle right there in the center. The other nice feature, which you don't see in a lot of aircraft, unless they are higher end, is going to be the cup holders. So you can actually carry <laughs> carry your drink with you. And then you have a little center console there that opens and is great for storing checklists and items like that. This does have tow brakes, which makes it easily maneuverable and a steerable nose wheel, so not castering. So this is a, you know, even off field types applications. This is very maneuverable there and easy to, easy to drive around. Your fuel tanks are right up here underneath us. You have your fuel sump right here. As I mentioned, each side holds 18.5 gallons. So very large uh, fuel carrying capacity, uh, makes for long distances, uh, you know, long distance flights very easy. And as we move out, we have our pitot tube. You would get a heated pitot tube in the essence of uh, having IFR. You have your tie downs. When we move around, you got your wing tips, your lights, strobes, ailerons, flaps, full metalized fuselage again. So coming all the way to back to the our stabilator in the back. And then uh, you have your anti anti uh, trim tab, servo tab there for the trim. And then back to this side, this little compartment over here is for where we store the ELT. And on this application, it's actually where we have the battery as well. So the battery is in the tail on this aircraft. And that's just because of the larger engine on this being the 141. We offset the weight and balance that way. This is the cool feature here. We have the third door, which as I open that, you can take a look in there and see how much room that actually has. It's incredible because very difficult to find a light sport with this much room. <laughs> the whole idea of light sport was to make it compact and small, but this definitely uh, changed the game for that. You have your nose wheel, which is extremely strong. One cool thing, it's hard to see on this because of the fairing, 
but it actually comes down at an angle. So some of the predecessors to this aircraft, as well as competitors, tend to be at a 90 degrees, which doesn't fare very well for hard landings on the nose or off-field type scenarios, where this actually comes down at an angle and gives it that extra rigidity and strength. So that's a nice feature there. Uh, you have your air filter for coming right into the turbo here on the side, another NACA inlet. Um, and then you have your oil cooler right in front. So very well-designed aerodynamic cowling for cooling. You have no issues there, um, as well as breathing for the engine. So we get great performance out of this. And it's very streamlined, especially if you look at the front. The nose cone ties right into the, to the molded cowling and then off into the aircraft. This is actually the uh, Duke propeller uh, made in France. Um, we, we leverage these quite a bit. This is a very high quality, full car composite carbon fiber prop. This is the Swirl 3R. This is a four blade. So as you experience today, very smooth. Um, that, that obviously helps a lot with the uh, comfort, comfort side as well as the noise. In this case, this is a ground adjustable propeller. You do have the option. This company actually makes an in-flight adjustable propeller uh, similar to like an Airmaster. So you can actually get the, the full scope of the performance of this type of aircraft. But this is pitch four cruise. So um, that gives us our top end speed. And once you get the altitude with the turbo, you can really go places. All right. So the Monterre, huh? Yep. We'll come over here, turn around this twin, and then we'll uh, just let it warm up. All right. At which point we can do our little system check, and then uh, we'll depart runway five. We have, you know, parking brake. We have all the switches right here in the middle. Our circuit breaker is right there. The trim, you can push the top are all on the yoke, so it's electric trim, both sides. We have a fuel selector, so left and right. We don't have the both option, but it's left or right. Nice. We have our flaps right here, which are electric. So if we want flaps, we just push, you know, down. So we'll go ahead and put about 10 degrees in. So I'll talk you through the takeoff, so that way I'll go a little bit slower than I normally would. But okay. uh, it's very simple. A little bit of back pressure, I just do that to alleviate any wear and tear on the nose. Obviously, it's very strong, but just you makes it nice and light. Drop a scout out of the sea land. Look at that. Uh, yeah, that guy's out of the way. Perfect. And we're on traffic. Get this shit over. Runway is on a roll. Runway five to land. All right, so we're just going to ease in the throttle, okay. um, and then basically uh, once it's full throttle, we're just going to go. So we release the brakes. Going to go one by two. It's a steerable nose wheel. So I'm using just the rudder to steer. We're at full throttle. Yep. Everything's coming alive. We got airspeed coming alive. I have a little bit of back pressure, and I'm just holding it down the runway. But now I'm just waiting for it to get up to takeoff speed. And we'll pick her up. Come on, traffic, time for the battery. There we go. Oh, beautiful. I'll tap the brakes so we don't get the vibration. And then now I'm just going to adjust the trim for picture for climb. That uh, four-bladed prop is really smooth, it. too. Yeah, yeah. I have a, a two-bladed on the 912 and my RV12. And uh, it, it vibrates a little more than this, for sure. Right now we're doing about 900 feet per minute. Okay. That's downwind. I can pitch it up for 60 if I wanted to climb even more drastically, but this is good. This is a nice shallow climb for us. All right, so we're coming up on 26. We'll go up to three, level off, and then uh, we'll play around a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I like it. It's um, like a very uh, serious airplane in a small package. Oh, yeah, you for know? sure. Yeah, that's a, actually a good way to put it. Yeah, so these are dual 10-inch G3Xs. Okay. You could go with one 10-inch and then like a G5, yeah. or you yeah. could even go with the 7-inch. And then this would be obviously the, the biggest option, you know, from that standpoint. You have dual 10-inch, a G5 backup, a navigator for a full IFR, you got the autopilot. You know, so you have a lot of options on this one. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. The windows are huge. The doors are huge. Yeah, good visibility. And the uh, cargo area, the luggage area, so that's, yeah, that's one of the big, big advantages for me on this aircraft. Because, uh, like I said, I've done multiple cross countries with it. So we flew from Phoenix. For Florida, we flown uh, one of these to Oshkosh uh, and back. Yeah, uh, I've flown from Wisconsin back to Florida just recently. Um, and having that amount of room for your bags and your gear, when I flew from Phoenix back, I carried me, my son, and spare parts and our bags. Oh, really? And it was, you know, no issue. So, right now about 3,800. We have a small climb in, but we're doing about 108, 107 knots. Okay. 113 true indicated, and that's at almost 4,000. So, if we went up to 8, 9, 10, You'd probably easily see, you know, the 120 plus. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's where the 915 really shines right. at a higher density altitude. Yep, absolutely. We're going to be taking two uh, more additional to Sun and Sun. Okay. Uh, one has the 912 ULS, okay. which I have a lot of time in. 
Yeah, but they perform great because actually the power to weight ratio changes a little bit because it's a little lighter, yeah, right, than a 15 so you actually still get really good, decent performance, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's a little simpler. Then you have the uh, 912 IS, which will be there as well. Yeah, if you know, the IS, country. like I mentioned before, that's the one I actually flew that cross-country. So from uh, Wisconsin all the way to Florida, I made one stop. Um, and I did that trip in uh, one day. So I'm just flying around. If you want the airplane, you can take it. I'm not doing much. Yeah, yeah my, my plane. Your airplane. A lot better visibility than a Cessna, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And we are still clear, right? Yep, and you're clear to the left as well. Okay. Yeah, it's trimmed out perfect right now. Yeah, the nice thing too, you have trim on your side too if you need to adjust for anything. But All right. So it's um, unlike a Cessna, you don't continuously have to mess with the trim. And clear left. Clear, clear right. Clear left. Yep. And clear right. A little bit of left rudder here. That's a nice day too. Probably windy, but nice day. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell that they uh, take pride in the quality of the build. And they do, the yeah. Airplane. And I think in Brazil, because of the resources, the quality of the aircraft are coming out really on the high end of that. And their cost is not, you know, is really competitive when it comes to any other aircraft you can buy even from Europe. Yeah. And if you really wanted to do it for the stall performance, like I said, either an inside adjustable propeller or pitching it for that 58 on takeoff, yep. I mean, it would be pretty much a rocket ship taking off like that, you know, almost yeah. vertical. So this is more of a go-place airplane to travel yeah. um, and then being able to carry the baggage that you want to carry and then the fuel capacity for not having to stop. Yeah. This just lends itself to being pitched for cruise more so than climb, right? So, yeah, so that's why we did that. All right, cool. Uh, I'll hand it back to you now. All right. My airplane? Yeah, so I'll demonstrate a real quick stall here if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. So we'll pull it up. See the airspeed decay a little bit, and it's gonna break. A little bit to the left, there's the AOA kicking in. Beep, 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 beep. So now we're at 48. You can feel the buffet, and there she is. That's pretty much it. Nothing. I can hold it, but yeah. there's nothing there. It just drops the nose. Yeah, I do see the AOA yep. indicator. So instead of a secondary stall, stall, I'll just put in a little bit of power. It's very docile. It doesn't want to break hard left or right. We'll take it back. Do a landing for you. How's that sound? That sounds great. All right. The other thing, too, this aircraft is extremely strong. I want to bring that up because that's one thing that impressed me uh, when we do the final assemblies here and stuff when they come in. Um, I was really blown away with how strong the structure is of this. So they have a Pro Molly uh, 4130 steel cage, and then they have sheet metal that's uh, riveted on top of that. So it's a full metal-like structure, and then you also have the triangulation. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, very strong airplane. Yeah. Uh, they can carry a lot, it can get beat up a lot, and it's not going to waver whatsoever. And the run job, they keep it the monitor during the left downwind for two, three, full stop to land. Under and below, over down the road in two minutes, he is caution, do not overfly. Still on traffic, monitor is turning final for runway two, three, D land. Toss around a little bit today. That's okay. All right, power is out, now we just fly to the ground. 500. 500. <laughs> that jump coming over the trees with the wind, so. A bit of crosswind correction in. Definitely tell it's coming out of the left. Now we're over the runway, we're just going to let it bleed off. Power's all the way out. I do have flaps in, so I'm just letting it bleed off the energy. You can see it flies very well slow. A little bit of a balloon there. Ta-da! Now we're down. <laughs> Very nice. Now we're just wheeling it. I'm not using any brakes because we're going to take yep. probably Alpha down there, but there we go. Oh, awesome. Thanks again, Alex. No hey, problem. Pilot. First time in a Brazilian aircraft, and I'm impressed. You know, this, this aircraft, you got people coming out of the airline industry that are retiring, people coming out of 172s or other tra training aircraft. This has a similar stance, similar height, similar flying qualities. This aircraft is a very safe platform. It's just an easy, all-around good aircraft. If you're looking for something to go from point A to point B, you know, go cross-country, take the kids, take the wife, whatever the case is, this is it. It's definitely a cross-country machine for sure. So if anybody's looking for that mission profile and wants to carry a lot, you're not going to beat this.